everybody, it's Tanko Bear, Cobra Tech Repair, we get everything tech news, gaming, and nerd related, and it is Friday, and you know what that means today, it is time for some tech news. Now, in some of today's tech news, do you want to live in nerd paradise, well head to this state. Um, now, the people at a state league decided that they was going to figure out, they was going to map out the United States and see which states were the most nerd friendly. Now, they came up with, uh, 12 different categories. Uh, the categories were Star Trek The Next Generation Cosplay, Harry Potter, Star Wars, Anime Movies, Dungeons and Dragons, LARPing, Doctor Who, Fantasy Literature, Lord of the Rings, Magic the Gathering, and Comic Books. They examined people in all 50 states and Washington, D.C. and compiled their listing on a per capita basis. Utah took top honors in half of the categories and came in second in two others, although it rate kind of low on the D&D meter. If that's your thing, consider moving to Alaska. It came first in that category and second overall. Combine that with the fact that it's the safest place to be when the zombie apocalypse hits, and it starts to look pretty appealing place to live if you don't mind 364 days of winter. DC came in dead last on nine of the nerd metrics, including LARPing, which some might consider the daily job of politicians who populate the district. Among the conclusions the stately took away from its research were that California is the only place in the West, where you can go to a Harry Potter movie and not sit behind a grown woman in a wizard hat. And the South is a vit virtual nerd desert and a damn hard place to get a game of D&D &D going. So, let's open this up here. I live in Illinois, and Illinois is said to have few nerds. Our average ranking is 26. And um, we have, it looks like mostly Magic the Gathering, which we do have a lot of Magic the Gathering here. Uh, fantasy literature... LARPing, I don't see a lot of that around here where I'm at, and Dungeons and Dragons, so there's that. I thought that was just something a little funny to throw out there to start things off with. Um, now, to get into some more serious news, the FCC has actually defended the new net neutrality proposal. Uh, critics said that the new proposal to be released Thursday would gut net neutrality principles because it would allow some traffic management. The proposed rulemaking will ask for the public input about whether so-called pay-for-priority traffic agreements between broadband characters and web content providers are commercially reasonable. I don't think they are. But the new proposal on the agenda during the FCC's May 15th meeting will restore net neutrality rules after an appeals court struck down the agency's old rules in January, while following, while following a roadmap to net neutrality regulation that the court set out. Now, they will... Vote on opening up the proposal to public comment during the meeting, and news reports are saying that the proposal is gutting net neutrality rules are flat out wrong. FCC Chairman Tom Wheeler said in a statement, the new open internet proposal will restore the concepts of net neutrality consistent in the court's rulings in January. There is no turnaround in policy. To be very direct, the proposal would establish that behavior harmful to consumers or competition by limiting the openness of the Internet will not be permitted. The new proposal includes rules saying broadband providers can't block legal web traffic and broadband providers may not act in commercially unreasonable manner to harm the Internet, including favoriting traffic from an affiliate in entity. Now, what does this mean exactly? Well, what... Broadband companies are trying to do is they are trying to map traffic to certain people by ISP basis. So say Verizon gets a contract with Netflix to be able to get higher broadband to their users. Well, then if people on AT&T won't have the same kind of bandwidth that goes to Netflix. So this is a huge deal, and it goes into discussion on May 15th. I hope all goes well. The Windows 8.1 start menu could show up this summer. There were reports saying that the start menu would appear this fall, but both The Verge's Tom Warren and ZDNet's Mary Jo Foley report that Microsoft hopes to deliver the start menu to Windows 8.1 users by August. Windows 8.1 users not content to wait for Microsoft to bring the start menu to windowed modern apps to the desktop today can get similar functionality. It'll cost up to $10 after a 30-day trial, but that's a small price to pay for anyone looking to get a more familiar Windows UI without giving up the benefits of the 8.1 desktop. Now, um, I myself use a, on my AMD rig, I use the um, Windows 7 layout for Windows 8, and I really, really like it. It gets rid of the entire Metro Windows face, boots right up to the Windows 7 face. I really like it, so check that out online. Now, the U.S. is to vote on 
bringing $1.8 billion of broadband to rural areas. Now, I second this because I do live in a semi-rural area. Now, the FCC voted in October 2011 to begin transitioning subsidies for traditional phone service and its universal service fund to broadband subsidies. To date, the new Connect America fund has spent $438 million to expand broadband to about 1.6 million U.S. residents and $300 million to expand mobile broadband service. Commissioners are scheduled to vote on the Phase 2 plan on Wednesday. The $1.8 billion will be made available to the largest telecom carriers in the U.S., including Verizon, AT&T, and CenturyLink. And those characters, those carriers would have the option of accepting the subsidy and building out broadband service or rejecting the money. If the large carriers reject the subsidy, the FCC would award the subsidy based on a bidding process. The Commission on Wednesday will vote on a proposal to approve the details of the billing process. Uh, they will also issue a proposal asking for public input on whether the Connect America Fund should increase the minimum download speeds of broadband available to get subsidies. The current minimum is 4 megabytes per second, but the average, but the agency will ask whether the minimum should be 10 megabytes per second. It will also ask for input on whether a second version of its mobility fund should target areas of the country that lack 4G LTE service, and it will consider whether to establish the Connect America Fund for small telecom carriers. So it looks like they're trying to finally bring faster internet faster internet to more rural areas such as where I am, Southern Illinois. Samsung's new 28-inch 4K monitor has dropped its price to $599 from $700. So, if you are looking to get a 4K monitor, you can check into Samsung. You can go check out Linus Tech Tips on YouTube. He did a full review of the 24-inch or 28-inch 4K monitor. He said he really liked it, but in HDMI, you only get 30 hertz, but with the DisplayPort 1.2, you get 60. And 30 hertz is really not good for gaming, but I guess it would be okay for movies. The price drops on Samsung's monitor could drive competitors selling larger monitors over $1,000 to drop prices. Asus's 31.5-inch PQ3321Q is priced at $3,000, and Sharp's 31.5-inch PN-K321 is priced at almost $3,600. So hopefully this leads to more monitor prices dropping. AMD has refreshed the Never, the Never Settle Forever bundle to include R-Series cards and indie games. Now, for years AMD has used the Never Settle bundles, which include a selection of games with the purchase of a graphics card. But until now, AMD's newest R-Series graphics card have been left out. Now it'll be all the way from the R7 240 all the way up to the R9 295X2. Buyers can also choose from a handful of indie games as part of the bundle. Here's a list of AAA games in the bundle. Dragon Siege 3, Dirt 3, Alan Wake, Darksiders 1 and 2, Company of Heroes 2, Total War Shogun 2, Titan Quest Gold Edition, Supreme Commander Gold Edition, Just Cause 2, Deus Ex Human Resolution, Human Revolution, Payday 2, Murdered Soul Suspect, Thief, Tomb Raider, Hitman Absolution, and Sleeping Dogs. AMD is also offering indie games in two packs, with each pack counting as a single selection. Buyers can choose any combination of the Bandard Saga, Dyad, Guacamole, and Tales from the Space Mutant Blobs Attack. So compared to previous AMD bundles, this has more options. It's also missing... But it's missing games that it had last time around, such as Devil May Cry, Far Cry 3, and Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. So, it's still more attractive than NVIDIA's current bundles, which usually include Daylight. It also included the um, the Batman series. But, at least they are starting to give out more free games. And finally, if you didn't know, there was a fire at a Samsung facility that affected the website and smart TV content. Fire at a Samsung facility in South Korea on Sunday resulted in a temporary outage that shut down its website and caused the company's smart TV products to report error messages. The fire broke out at the facility of Samsung SDS, a subsidiary of Samsung Group and a provider of software services, outsourcing, and consulting. In a statement, Samsung Electronics said it detected a brief service disruption that lasted for four, to four and a half hours before the service was restored. Samsung did not perform, provide more information. During the outage, the Samsung.com website was down, along with the company's Smart Hub service. A post on the Samsung SDS blog said there was a fire that was a result of a power supply issue 
and the blaze resulted in an injury to at least one person hit by debris. I hope everybody is okay. Uh, Early this year, in March, another fire erupted at Samsung's supplier in South Korea called DAP Corporation, and that supplier printed circuit boards for the company's smartphones, but Samsung said the incident would not delay the launch of its Galaxy S5 handset. So, there was a fire at a factory, but it seems like everybody is okay. All right, guys, this has been Tanko Bear, Cobra Tech Repair. I hope you enjoyed today's edition of Tech News. If you liked, give it a like. If you didn't, feel free to give it a dislike. I'm trying to keep these within around the 10-minute mark just to try to keep your guys' attention and not go to, like, a 20-minute tech news video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave it down in the comment section down below. Find me here on YouTube. You can find me on Twitter at TankoBear92, and you can find me on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Cobra Tech Repair. See you guys next time.